Well, if you're just joining us, you're still watching Ways, and we're still talking about how to stay safe. And yes, Confident is still here with us. Um, you can use the hashtag Ways to join this conversation, and also you can, you know, just follow us because <laughs> I want Uti to just continue our question. WhatsApp. Let me just give you the WhatsApp. Please WhatsApp us. Don't call. WhatsApp to 0818038463. Uti, your question. So, the burning question. Mm -hmm. You just talked about password managers. Mm -hmm. We've all heard the stories. Facebook has been hacked. Twitter has been hacked. Apple. And then Apple. And now you tell me, create, I mean, <laughs> one a different password per platform. Mm -hmm. I know you, the experts <laughs> will say do it. The doing is harder than the same. Ah. But I put everything on a password manager. How am I sure that that password manager tomorrow won't get hacked? What's this? Because that's where my mind goes when I see that thing. Every time I log in, it says save. I'm thinking because <laughs> tomorrow Google will come and tell well, me tell I have 19 that. compromised passwords and I'm thinking how did it get compromised mm -hmm. I didn't tell anybody this is the only place it's at mm -hmm. so maybe just give me some confidence okay exactly. so what I would do is I will put myself out there how do I do it okay. Maybe I think that will give us but b before I start putting myself on how I do it I want to state that there is nothing absolutely safe but what you want to ensure is that you make it so hard for you to be the low-hanging fruit you know, be make it harder. Yeah, yes. be, be, be up the tree. So people, it, it takes a lot. If I wait there, when it happens, they usually like, oh, you try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, I'm just joking there. But yes. the mm -hmm. idea is don't be the low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. And cyber criminals are going for it. So people are fruits on the ground. They're not even low hanging. They're not hanging nothing. Mm -hmm. They're true. on the ground. I mean, yeah. the guy who uses a very simple password and he uses that same password across platforms, it's not hard. I have to put all my tools here. Yeah, one minute is, I mean, in his account. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to be in multiple of these accounts. So the, the key idea is not to be the low-hanging fruit. That's one. Then two, habits around making security safer is what's going to encourage you to embrace them. And that's what password, password managers do. They are aiding that safe habit. Because honestly, let's be very frank, how many of us can have multiple pa uh, passwords? And I forget them. them. Immediately, I set them. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what password managers are. And password managers also store your, your passwords in hashes. That means that um, they don't even keep the key. So sometimes, yeah, if you, miss, if you, if you don't remember your password, that's another, another thing entirely. But they don't even keep the key. And then they store them in what's called hashes. So it makes it difficult. So the key idea I'm putting out there is while they are, in, they are not impregnable, they've put in so much safety mechanisms. They are, of course, stronger than your brains to remember all of the passwords. So really, the risk of putting in a password manager is way less than the risk of trying to remember multiple pa pa passwords or even having one password, which, you know, across platform, because, well, I can't remember all my passwords, yeah? So th that's one. The habit side of it is there. There's also the angle of um, how you store it. So I'm going to put myself out there. I use a password manager, and I have one very strong password for my password manager. Hmm. I construct that password from telling a story. The story can change per time. So we all remember stories, right? <laughs> I remember some I was told when I was five years old. So I use a story, and I take that story and make it into a password. The story could be, my rent, my first rent was $100 at number 100 Horizon Towers. I just pick the numbers in that sentence and the first letters in all of the words. And $100 is already, the whole dollar sign is already a special character. Wow. Before you know it, I've made a 12, I've made a 12 uh, password, I've made a 12 character long password. And that's for my password manager. After that, I, I don't remember anything else. My password manager will generate strong passwords for me and I don't have to remember them. And the ones you mentioned are actually password managers as well. So you see that because you have that, and for your key, if you're using a, an iPhone, you have a keychain password, for example. That's a password. That could be your master password. Everything else you should remember by that. And you use it to generate strong passwords. What that makes you and keeps you doing is the right habits. And what, like you said, is strongest, what we're trying to get people to do. It's not one of doing the right thing. Yeah. It's the habits. Yeah. So the tools the around getting those habits, one of them is a password manager. And by all means, whether or not they can be hacked, it is way safer than you having one password. One password. Yeah. Okay, so I was, coming, I was looking at the Deloitte trend. There's a report on the trends for 2021. Mm -hmm. And it says there will be rise for deep fakes. So first and foremost, for education purposes, def def <laughs> define what a deep fake is. And please... How do we save ourselves from this? Because I see it, so probably maybe if when you finish um, your definition, I see it really 
affecting and Everything. changing the landscape for mm -hmm. a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So deep fake is what it is, <laughs> fake that is well put together. Wow. So um, um, criminals are using um, um, artificial intelligence and using a lot of advanced tools to build lookalikes and spread pro propaganda. So for example, um, you could have the president of America, in quotes, coming to say, uh, come, come on a video, there's a video circulating now on our WhatsApp group, because that's where it always goes out, <laughs> our WhatsApp group saying, uh, President Buhari is an idiot. He has not been doing well for this country. In fact, he should be removed. First and foremost, that is a bilateral. Bi that, that's calamity because that's like say your America is going to be set against yeah. Nigeria, and that's like do you understand? It's a lot of problem. We is don't going want to, to understand, but continue. <laughs> exactly. So deep fake is being used many times across the world, especially around. Um, Political, uh, political campaigns, yeah, political and campaigns and elections a lot of times to dissuade people to whatever direction the originators of the campaign is um, want to use it. And deepfake is, is, is the big problem. Deepfake is leading to disinformation, misinformation, fake news as well, because they make things that are not real, make, thing, make the story um, look real and make it easy for anybody to buy into it and mm -hmm. begin to act on emotions. One of the key things that deepfakes does, I've just mentioned the word now, is stare emotions. You see, when we are very emotionally charged, we are not thinking logically. So, wait, 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 wait. Why will the President of America be saying the kind of things, regardless of whether or not they and have we all pick our ties? Twitter knives. Do you understand? Yes. Oh, we are tweeting away immediately. Look at his head. Is he mad? You know, you know Nigeria should be... If I, you, put out, you know, they put out going to start setting fire, and they will be there. You know, because you're not thinking logically anymore. Or they say, for example, somebody... In Nigeria, they were so religious. You go across the religious lines and say something, and you're using deep fake. And maybe an imam or you know a pastor, a very popular pastor, is you know the face or look alike of him is yes. used to create that kind of video. So we should be very conscious because we're going into uh, you know uh, very soon we're going to go into an alleged, um, a politically charged time. Mm. Yes. Be mindful. Process whatever information you are, you're going to be getting. Exactly. And try to be logical about it. Why should this person say this? You know, what other platforms, reputable platforms have carried this message? So I think we should also, it's a time to engage our common sense. As, you, as we got cybersecurity, we've discussed, I mean, mm. I just called, Temi was speaking about, um, you know, it, it's also common sense that we need to kick in, in in the midst of the rush that they try to get you in. And, and we're just talking about cybersecurity as well. Mm. One of the key ways that hackers can get information is by charging your emotions. Mm. So they, they create mm. emotions like fear. You know, fear of missing out, you know, um, uh, fear of losing something. You know, that is such a strong emotion. We don't realize it, but when we are afraid, our uh, brain is not thinking. Adrenaline kicks <laughs> It shuts down. <laughs> exactly. So um, let me even come to Uti, because recall, Uti, that we're talking about how people do not know what kind of information that they share on social yeah. media that can yeah. lead to them. Yeah. So let me just let you take that so away. So I think it's important. Um, I, we were talking and I was saying how, uh, people don't realize how many zeros and ones they're putting out there because you're just taking a picture, mm -hmm. you're putting it on social media, you're tagging with your location. So people put so much out there. So maybe just to educate people mm -hmm. around how to protect themselves on social media because nobody ever thinks about security. You want to, you know, prepare I'm them, serious. you want I your could, pictures. I could identify mm. someone's house and I passed it from the pictures she was posting. Yeah. I knew exactly where she lived and it came unconsciously. I saw the door and I say, I know this door. Oh and I could recognize mm. the door. She did not post anything apart from the door. And that's a consistent place. And it had a landmark. And I said, this is this person's house. It scared me. Mm. <sighs> I know that. I know exactly <laughs> what you're saying, you know. And I tell people this a lot. Um, we are quite careless with how much information we share, even about, about our workplaces. Um, we share so much. Um, somebody is leaving an organization, or just joining an organization, will take a picture of their batch and share online. Especially on LinkedIn. You know what that means? That means that I could, if I was trying to get into your building, in your, into your organization, what I would do is just take that picture, superimpose my picture on it, work on it, and I would have your batch exactly like yours. Except wow. if, you know, there's a special technology behind your batch that I have to scan to get out, which again, there are ways around that as well. So you remember that when you're sharing information, how can somebody take this information and use it? I mean, so when she says batch, she means your identity card. Yeah, your identity <laughs> card. Thank you for putting that out. You know, but if like if people share uh, results of their children, the names of their schools are visible. Your child could be could be at, could be kidnapped. 
you know, people, they say, we give, give away, give away, people are sharing oh, their bank geez. details right out there, not even people's DMs, people are sharing, people are sharing their addresses online. The, the physical world and the online world, it's just a continuum, like, that's what you should remember. If you won't, if you won't back naked outside, why would you be sharing this kind of information outside? It's, it's literally you putting yourself out there without covering yourself up. Um, because somebody can easily gain access to your, to your house. Someone can, someone can stalk you and just yeah. find out where you, you're living very easily. Somebody can, can get um, past just that information, can use that information to begin to source more begin to source more and begin to get more once they are intent on doing it. So uh, remember that anything that is personally identifiable information about you should be kept safely. Don't share that information openly. If you're can transacting business and you're doing it, you know, um, in private, it's okay. But things like your personal, personally say, um, identified inf information should be kept uh, private and any pointers to that as well. I mean, you're talking about the landmarks, for example. I, you should not be taking pictures in front of your car. For example, exactly. don't do license it. License plate showing. Your license plate showing. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. You should not be taking pictures in front of your house. <laughs> don't do it. Somebody could use that information as well to find your house. And there are many hazards. Now they're kidnapping people fast. So at least <sighs> maybe <laughs> we'll open our eyes to that. Yeah. But please protect yourself and your families as well. I'm, I was thinking about children just now. Please protect. This is a time to protect your families. If you must share the information around your child, make sure that... Please so don't close, share information about your child group. for starts. <laughs> you know, if you must. If, if you, you must. must. <laughs> close group, please. Mm. Okay, so I'll just let Tammy just quickly, Tammy just quickly ask a question that should answer for one minute because I did not, this is so such an interesting topic. I don't even know that the time is running. Oh, yeah. I felt like I had to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have more, my notebooks is full. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, there's, um, you mentioned that you know, there are certain links that we shouldn't click on and we should just be aware. I know that um, I've been told that there are some, some things you should note mm -hmm. to identify those links that could be harmful, could be dangerous. If you would like to share some of these, I would just I think I'd really appreciate what you should note. Like, you know, sometimes they say, sign this campaign online, mm -hmm. sign this petition, mm -hmm. or just certain things, win so, so, and so. How do we know the links that are unsafe? How do we know the websites that are generally unsafe? Okay, short answer. <laughs> I'll try. That's a very big question. Question, but yeah. The first thing I would say is find out if it's wanted conversation or not. Because once it's uh, unsolicited information, it's very likely that it was sent to you automatically and it was spam. Mm. And that's one. So don't respond to unsolicited and do not click links in unsolicited communication, whether it's on WhatsApp, on, by email, or social media, whatever. Please don't click on any such links. Two, one very major trick used by cyber criminals these days is they started using shortened um, URLs. So you know how like how we have meetings and then we have yes. weekly, yeah. So they know that when you send you that palliative link that has xyz.com, yes. you're going to figure it out. So what they do is they take that link and use a shortening service and then shorten that link. So you're more likely to fall for that. That's a current prevalent trend we're seeing. Mm. So before before you click on any such link, go to checkshorturl.com, copy that link, do not click on it, and put it there and check the long version of that URL and analyze it with your mind. Is this does this look right? Is it, if, if it's a government pilot, if it should end with .gov.ng. Does it end with .gov.ng? Mm. So mm. research and then just Google that link. Sometimes just Googling it will do the work for you. You will find that there are reports yeah, about that link, for example, or Google the organization without clicking on the link. Yeah. Find out if that offer that they're giving you in that mail or whatever is publicly advertised on their social media platforms or their website. Usually if there's that offer or whatever, it will be on those platforms. So just really engage your your FBI or your <laughs> investigative sense. <laughs> your social security sense. <laughs> exactly. In, in other news, calm down. Be coming down. Be coming down. <laughs> I think it, it has been such an interesting conversation. Yeah. I do not think that this yeah. time is enough. I'd really, really like us to do part two of this because we've not even touched on um, business you know, the business emails no and the company. Yeah. Yes. And all of that, there's a lot more that we need to talk about. What are we looking out for when we see emails? For example, not everyone on my WhatsApp sees my status, depending on the relationship I have with you, you know, and maybe it's just time we start reading some of these things before we say yes to them mm -hmm. or yeah. the permissions that we give mm -hmm. for the apps and everything. We didn't talk about permissions as well. Exactly. So please, thing. in one minute, just give us a final word. I don't know how many of these things you can fit in, mm -hmm. but definitely we're going to have a part two of this. Mm -hmm. For start, I would say please turn on two-factor authentication everywhere possible. It makes it harder. There's two-factor authentication easy to set up on your WhatsApp. 
it's easy to set up on your Instagram account, on any account that you find, on Twitter, any account that you find valuable, please set up two-factor authentication. It's there for you to use. To have, um, use a password manager or make sure that you, you have multiple passwords per your important platforms, which is your social media, your banking, and your email as well. Um, it's also important that you have tools that help you stay protected, like your antiviruses we've spoken about. Your phone also needs an antivirus. You don't wear a mask, but you don't get antivirus. <laughs> Check them out. <laughs> Please, I'm still, still going to borrow another one minute because okay. I find out that we keep men mentioning to, um, to factor. factor, but we did not say what it was. Okay. And you know, there are a lot of there are a lot of things that sound so literate around here, but we know that a lot of for some people these words are totally new. new. 30 seconds. Please okay. break down what that sure. is. Thank so, you. So, um, two-factor authentication is the second way of confirming that you are who you say you are. Mm. Your password is something you know. That's one thing to confirm. But anybody could have had access to that password. I mean, we've just shared examples. Facebook was recently hacked. Your password may have been stolen. You know. So another way that they can also confirm that you are who you say you are, maybe by something you have or something that you are. Something that you are could be your thumbprint. Something that you have could be your phone, and you can generate a code from your phone, or a password, uh, or a, a, a small password could be sent as a text message on your phone. That's something you have. So that mm. second level makes it harder for somebody to gain access. So two-step verification is giving that one thing and giving a second thing to say, ah, I'll be where I thought I'd be. I'll be give me access. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Uti, any last words? Um, I mean, there was one thing for me that was key that maybe we didn't get the chance to talk about, which is emails. Mm -hmm. Our inbox is such a private place, but people just, it's like your house, people, and imagine people just barging into your house anyhow. Um, I think that it's important for people, people still fall for phishing. Um, please, when These you see an email. These are words that we still even need to talk about. Yes, we need to have when a you see an email, it. please read it. When you start to see typos, and you see capitals <laughs> in wrong places, just know that there's something wrong. So we need to start, people need to start to train their instincts around all these things. I know that literacy levels and, you know, everybody's on social media this, you know, today doesn't mean that everybody has the same level or, or acumen around these things. So people need to start to learn how to protect themselves actively. Mm -hmm. Tammy, 30 seconds. Wow. I think it's been a great conversation. When we get to part two, I'd like us to take this further to, you know, when a person has been hacked or has been defrauded online, what do you do? What's the mm. next step? Because I see that there's a lot of people, there's a lot of panic and, you know, and lack of knowledge about what to do at that point. So hopefully when we get to have part two, which hopefully will be soon, we'll talk about that. For me, I would say be careful of giveaways. So stone like free things too much. And as, <laughs> as Utia said, please calm down. Look at the offers that you get, even offers for jobs. Mm. Look at the offers that you get. When emails are sent to you, is that the way that First Bank or GT Bank or Access Bank writes the email? Is that the way they spell it? We need to start to be conscious of all these things. And we need to be safe both in the digital world and in the physical world. We would, we would, would definitely have a part two of this. Thank you for sitting with us today as we all learned. Now, ways was bettered from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. If you're a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching Ways and follow us on all our social media handles. This will be an all year round engagement. So tell a friend to keep all eyes on Ways. Our quote for today again, in a digitally connected world, a byte of data can boost or bite your brand. That was said by Bernard Kelvin Clive. See you on Monday at 8 p.m. where we bring another great conversation to your screen. Bye.